Redeemer lives. The physical nation of Israel was never the point of God's plan in Scripture. The promise to Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, is one of the most crucial moments in all of Scripture. And if we misunderstand the point of this promise, it will affect our view of the rest of the Bible. Uh, what Genesis 12, 1 through 3 says is this. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. If this promise that God made to Abraham is ultimately about the physical nation of Israel, then that will change the entire way that we look at Scripture. However, if this promise that God made to Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, is ultimately about someone or something else, that will also significantly impact our view of Scripture. So let's examine this promise that God made to Abraham and break it into three parts as you can break this promise down. The first part we'll talk about is a great nation. Israel became a great nation under King David and King Solomon. You can read about that in 2 Samuel all the way through the book of 1 Kings. The second part of this promise is the seed promise. Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah just as God promised. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 21. So you have the great nation, you have the seed promise, you also have the land promise. And God also kept this promise to the physical descendants of Abraham and gave them all the land that he promised to give them. Joshua 21 verse 43 through 45 and Joshua 23 14 makes this very clear. In fact, it says, God gave them all the land that he had promised. They're not still waiting to receive the land today. God gave it all to them, every bit that he had promised. All three of these promises did apply to the physical nation of Israel, and God kept all three of them. But there was a greater meaning and purpose behind these three promises. Let's see what the New Testament writers have to say about this promise that God made to Abraham. First of all, let's think about the first part of that promise, the seed promise. As we think about the seed promise to Abraham, and we think about some passages from Galatians chapter 3 through Galatians 4 verse 7, we won't read the whole thing, but I'm picking a few of these verses out to show you what the seed promise was really all about. Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 through verse 9 is where we'll first start. Paul, writing to the churches of Galatia, says this, Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Those who are Christians, is Paul's point, are blessed with believing Abraham. You drop down a few verses later, and Paul continues on in Galatians 3.16, and he says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And he does not say, and to seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ? That's Galatians 3.16. And now Galatians 3.26-29, he continues on and says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. The Apostle Paul revealed to the Christians in Galatia that the ultimate fulfillment of the seed promised to Abraham is Jesus Christ and those who are his. The seed promise was ultimately not about the physical nation of Israel. 
the seed promise was ultimately about Jesus Christ and those who are His, Christians. So now after thinking about the seed promise, we think about the second part of that promise. When God told Abraham, I will make of you a great nation. Once we know that the seed promise was ultimately referring to Christ, that also gives us a hint about the nation promise. I want you to think about 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7 through 10 with me. Peter, writing to Christians, says this, Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, speaking of Christ. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But notice what he says here. But you are Christians now, is who he's talking to. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you, Christians, may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. In context, what Peter's saying here, the builders who rejected Christ refer to the Jewish nation. Jesus made this very same statement to the chief priests and the Pharisees. In Matthew 21, 42 through 43, he told them the kingdom of God would be taken away from them and given to other people. But what people or nation was Jesus talking about? the same nation and special people that Peter is writing to in 1 Peter, to Christians. The ultimate fulfillment of the nation promise to Abraham refers to Christians, to those who are now in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, Colossians 1, 13 through 14. And that brings us to the final part of this promise that God made to Abraham, the land promise. And by now, I hope that we realize that the land promised to Abraham was also about something far more significant and greater than the land of Canaan. And to show this from the scriptures, let's think about Hebrews 11, verse 13 through 16, and also Philippians 3, 20 through 21. First of all, the passage in Hebrews 11 says this, These all died in faith, there in the middle of that faith hall of fame we refer to, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Hebrews eleven thirteen through 16. And now think about, in addition to this, what Paul wrote in Philippians three twenty through 21, writing to Christians, the church in Philippi, he says, For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which He is able even to subdue all things to Himself. The ones who died in faith in the Hebrews 11 passage include Abraham and Sarah. They were looking for a homeland. They desired a heavenly country. They looked forward to the city that God was preparing for them. Paul reminded Christians that our citizenship, our home country, is in heaven. The ultimate fulfillment of the land promised to Abraham is the city in the heavenly country where God lives, Hebrews 12, 22 through 24. As we thought about these things together today, I want to think about a few, a few things we can take away from this, maybe a few things for you to think about further. The blood flowing through your veins makes no difference as far as God's favor is concerned. 
He shows no partiality, Acts 10, 34 through 35. The gospel truly is for all, Romans 1, 16 and 17. So it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you're from. The gospel is for you. The only blood that matters is the blood of Christ, which transfers us into the kingdom of Christ and forgives us of our sins. Acts 22, 16 says, Why are you waiting? Arise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. When we are baptized into Christ, we come into contact with His blood, which washes away our sins. And if you belong to Christ, if you are Christ, if you are a Christian, then you are an heir of the promise that God made to Abraham. Galatians 3, 26 through chapter 4, verse 7. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you listening to this episode, this video, this podcast of Centered on Christ. Centered on Christ is emailed as an article five days a week. Click the link in the description if you want to start receiving Centered on Christ to help with your daily Bible study.